Welcome, chess enthusiasts. Today, we are going to dive deep into the captivating world of chess and explore a brilliant and aggressive opening called the Italian Game Fried Liver Attack. This is us, your favorite chess tutors from the TNO Synergic Metaverse. Grab your favorite chessboard and get ready for some exciting tactics and strategies. Before we proceed, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Your subscription motivates us to bring you more content on chess openings and traps. Hit the subscribe button below and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on our future videos. The Italian game is one of the oldest, most popular, and an aggressive chess openings. It starts with the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop to c4. This setup aims to control the center of the board and threaten to attack the weak f7 square. But where does the fried liver attack fit into all of this? Let's see. At this point, the most commonly played move from black is knight to f6, intending to capture our undefended e4 pawn. But for white, this marks the beginning of the fried liver attack. White advances their knight to g5, attempting to fork both the rook and queen on the next move. Here, pawn h6 is not a sensible move for black, as it does nothing to stop the upcoming fork. So, the best and the most commonly played move by black is pawn d5, which blocks the protection for the knight during the fork, and at the same time threatens the bishop to move away from that diagonal. White already has his pawn set up on e4, and white captures black's pawn using it. Black captures our pawn using their knight, and if we capture the knight with our bishop, it will be a blunder as black can capture back using their queen, and it also helps black develop their queen at the beginning of the game, which is not a good sign for us. So, instead of capturing back, we play knight f7, sacrificing our knight. This knight sacrifice is known as the fried liver attack. This move aims to expose black's king and create chaos on the board. This aggressive approach can put the unprepared black player under immense pressure and lead to exciting attacking opportunities for white. If black accepts the sacrifice, then we are all good to go. We play the unexpected move, queen f3, check. Now, the black king has various options to choose from. We shall break down each in the upcoming sections of the video. More importantly, if you like the content of our video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And stay tuned till the end, because things are going to get nasty on the chessboard. The first and the most commonly played response by black is moving their king to e8. So we capture the knight on d5 using our bishop. Taking the bishop with the queen is a blunder for black as we can easily capture back with our queen. So the most commonly played move is knight d4, threatening our queen. If black plays this move, then game over, because queen to f7 is a checkmate. We have analyzed the strategy to follow if black moves their king to e8. Now we analyze the move king to g8. This move is a blunder for black because if we capture their knight on e5 using our bishop, the king will end up in check. Any responses to either block the check or capture the checking piece will create immense loss to black, and every move from white ends up with a check and finally a checkmate. So, king e8 is really a bad option for black. For the same reason, you don't see this move played by players at and above the intermediate level. Next, we analyze the situation as black responds with king to g6. We capture on d5. Black plays knight to d4, threatening our queen. Black expects us to move our queen to safety, but we surprise them with the move bishop to f7. Check. Now black has only two options. The first one is to move their king to h6. We play pawn d3 checking the king with our dark square bishop. The only option left for black is to play pawn g5 and block the check. So, we play queen h5, again check. King to g7 is the only option for black. We capture the pawn on g5 using our bishop, simultaneously threatening the black queen. The second option for black is to move their king to g5. We play pawn d3, checking the king with our dark square bishop, as shown earlier. The only option for black is to move their king to h4. Now we follow a prescribed strategy, pawn h3. Black captures our queen, delivering a check to our king. We move our king to safety, and black moves their knight to safety. Now we play the move pawn g3, delivering an unexpected checkmate for the black king. Another response you may see from black is king to e6, defending their knight and escaping the check at the same time. We play knight c3, 
increasing the pressure on the d5 square. The most common response from black is knight to b4, defending the d5 square and threatening for a king rook fork on the next move. We play pawn a3, threatening the knight. The knight captures our rook through the usual fork maneuver. We capture the other knight. If black plays c6, then we play knight c7, a double check from both the knight and the bishop, and after the black king moves, we capture their rook. Now that we have analyzed the strategies for white, we will now delve into the ways by which black can refute the fried liver attack. The first one among them is Palerio defense. After white captures our pawn on d5, we play knight a5, threatening the white's bishop. This forces white to either retreat or proceed with the bishop checkline variation. I will explain what a bishop checkline is. White plays bishop b5, checking the king. Black responds with pawn c6. White captures using the pawn. Black captures back and threatens white's bishop. Instead of retreating the bishop, white proceeds with queen f3, pinning the pawn to the rook. Second strategy for black is to play the fritz variation. After the pawn exchange as shown earlier, we move the knight forward to d4. If white plays any move like pawn c3, we play pawn b5, completely estranging the bishop. Let white play any move. Our intention is to capture the bishop. Here, I would like to mention one move for white that can save their bishop from being attacked. When black plays knight d4, known as the Fritz variation, instead of threatening the knight, we play pawn a4, preventing the usual pawn b5 move from black. The third strategy you may see from black is known as Blackburn Shilling Gambit. This occurs at the earlier stage of the Italian game. After white's bishop to c4 move, black plays knight d4, threatening to capture our knight and quash the fried liver attack even before it has begun. Also, black tempts us to capture their free pawn on e5. But it is a trap. After the queen to g5 move, we end up with a simultaneous attack on our knight and our g2 square. Now the main question in your mind will be, how do I destroy the Blackburn shilling gambit? It is easy. We trade off our knight. After black captures back, we play the unexpected move of queen h5. From there, we proceed in the Damiano gambit style. Please view our video on the Damiano gambit to know about the various attacks possible. The link to that video is provided in the description, and it is also being shown on the info card at the top right corner of the video. The fourth strategy and most brilliant strategy for black to stop the fried liver attack is to play the anti-fried liver defense at the initial stage itself. Excuse me, what is an anti-fried liver defense? Well, that is the most brilliant and the most cunning move against the fried liver attack. Could you find out that yourself? The most brilliant one? The most tactical one? The most cunning one? Fasten your seatbelts because we present you with the most brilliant anti-fried liver defense. It is none other than just pawn h6. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and make sure to subscribe so you never miss out on any of our exciting content. Your support means the world to us. Thank you for being part of our community. So, there you have it. The Italian game fried liver attack in all its aggressive glory. As with any opening, it is essential to study and understand the ideas and variations thoroughly. With practice and experience, you can confidently employ this exciting opening and create thrilling chess battles on the board. As we bid farewell for now, remember to keep delving into the endless realms of chess, savoring every moment of your quest toward mastery. Until we meet again, this is your cherished TNO Synergic Metaverse, bidding you adieu with excitement for what lies ahead. Stay inspired and keep those strategic gears turning.